Okay, and now I can say welcome everybody to this Helpful Village webinar for July 13th, 2022. It's going to be a busy one, so I hope you're ready because we had plenty of energy this last month and we have a lot of improvements. But the agenda stays the same, so we have an agenda with uh, some news we want to share with you, some reminders, the release notes, uh, which is the improvements we did this month, a uh, quick demo, and then the next priority is what we'll be working on next month. First, this is the actually these are reminders. Uh, more than news but um uh basically yeah so the schedule is a little weird this month and we're doing the webinar today there is no webinar next week but there is the usual webinar with uh, v2v on the fourth wednesday of the of the month which is august 17th at the usual time uh sorry i messed it up entirely that's not true august 17th is a week from a month from now is the the usual third wednesday of the month uh in august and the V2V webinar is not next week. It's two weeks from now, July 27th, at, at the usual fourth Wednesday of the month at the usual times. And then here is a couple of links with the Help Center, Slack, and other resources we make available. But just this is to be clear on the dates. Uh, for the next webinar we're doing with V2V, please feel free to send your questions to uh, Gary Frankel, who's our national coordinator. You can reach him on this email address, which is hbusers at v2vnetwork.org. If you can send him your questions ahead of time, we have time to review them and try to prepare an answer for that V2V webinar that we do next month. So we, so this month we are announcing improvement. Ne next, next webinar, we will be answering your questions. If there are not enough questions, what we wanted to do is some, some web editing uh, training that we'll be providing. So if you if you're planning to attend that webinar, we want to talk about that next in two weeks from now. It's just a few reminders about the fact that there's a training docs guide and a help center. This is how the help, help, uh, the help center looks like. You can ask your questions or explore our documentation, and then you can submit your bug requests or support requests on this website, support.helpfulvillage.com, and submit ideas for improvement, new things we could be doing to ask.helpfulvillage.com. Please keep those two tracks separated. And the things that we need to fix is a you know support and then ideas for improvements of new features we can be adding is on the other ask.helpful village and that's it now we can get started <laughs> chris i don't know what happened with the news but uh i thought we had a news i can i can just say it because i saw the slide christina prepared but uh, we're welcoming a new village uh, that is called love living at home is a, a village in itaca new york state so let's say welcome to them even if something happened to the slide that I didn't see. Uh, and let's go with the, with the improvements. First thing is about web editing. So you have your editable pages. Some of the changes we did is this one. I'll show you this one in the demo. It's something that we had some, a while back, but then when we updated to the latest version, we lost in some way. It's like you're familiar with this web editor, right? So you can edit your web pages with this. And, and change your text, etc. There is this button here that is blue here. This is kind of show blocks option. So you can click on that. The good thing about it is that it will do all these dashed lines around it, right? It's, it's going to be shown to you. So basically you can see sometimes, you know, when you write code for these pages, I mean, even if you use the editor, it's writing code in the back. For example, here it shows this is a paragraph, this is a header and stuff like that. And sometimes you can have some funny stuff going on with your website and you don't know what it is because there is some code in the back that you cannot see. But this is showing some of that code where the columns are and stuff like that. So it helps you understand what's going on. So I'll show a demo of this a little later. Uh, but this option here, yeah, i just letting you know where it is. So this one here, you can edit the code if necessary, but this one is showing the blocks of what's the structure of the, of the page you have. So we added one option to the, to the editor. We are adding two new web templates, well, simple ones actually, but uh, are useful. So if you wanna add your page where you have the, the, the image on the left, uh, right text to the right of it, well, you can use that new template. And we have the other one, which is text on the right, image on the, text on the left, image on the right. So just more options for your web editing. But as I was saying, we wanna do a training where we go with you about how to use the templates and stuff like that. So, um, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, there is another thing we did about styling and the website is like we have discussed in previous meetings, the fact that we now added a possibility to customize your style sheet that allows you primarily to change your primary colors. For example, here you see this donate now button when on Helpful Village, the, the regular button was red and uh, now you can customize it. So if this village feels that they are more comfortable with the blue, then we go with dark blue for these links. 
uh, that we had already last month. All the links will be blue. There is other options uh, that are blue. And now something that we had not done before is that the buttons on the emails, you remember when you send an email out to your members about with volunteers to opportunities to volunteer or renewals and stuff like that, those buttons were not using the new customizable color. From this version, the buttons on those emails are also using the primary color that you have here. So rather than having the red button that you're familiar um, with, you will see a blue button that goes out in the emails that go up. So obviously, anyway, that, that's it. This is different things that you can customize. So uh, I think we probably have a training document about this, but basically it's like the, I would put the default button colors in email, default header. Yeah, there's this primary color, the color one that we just saw, and then you can change the color of the background. Uh, it can change the color of the footer. There's a few things that you can change on this customization. It's a little heavy. We, we'll do that in the training because it's hard to read this slide. Um, now, next improvement is uh, on the user profile. What is this all about? Oh yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, now I see what's going on. Because at the same time that we were doing the, okay, there are two things I can show you on this picture. First, if you see here, we were I was working on the customization colors and these tabs here were showing in blue until now for some weird reason. And now we're using your first color primary color. So it's showing red here and would show blue for the villages that customize their primary color to blue. So it's just prettier here, these, these tabs here. And the other thing that we did is, <laughs> but I had to read this long sentence. You know that you can sell tickets um, on your website, right? For, for your events. Now, when you're buying a ticket, we were asking you to provide an address and that address, we were using it for the purchase order or something like that. But now we are doing one more improvement based on a recommendation from Village Without Walls in, in Portland, is that we can use uh, that address when someone purchases a ticket, if that user is in the database and that user did not have an address on their record, we're gonna record that address on their personal profile. So basically just you know, helping to, to have a more complete user profile so that we have an address if they ever provided it when buying a ticket. Whew, that was a long sentence. Um, okay, this one is funny too. Um, so this is membership association. Uh, so when you go to a member, you can have household members, right? And you go to the member tab, and then in the member tab, you can associate the second person uh, that is in the same household membership. Uh, what we were doing before is that you can search for, you know, for example, let's say you have Mr. Uh, like John Smith and Laura Smith, right? So imagine you create the primary member in this case, let's say it's Laura Smith, and then you go to her profile and then you go to the associate members tab and you wanna add John Smith to her profile, so you do that. First thing we invite you to do is search, but we were asking you to search by first name, last name to see if that person existed in the database already. And, um, and then we were also asking you to provide the email address, but sometimes, but what we did in this month is that we removed the, the, the requirement to, to put the email address of this third person, because you don't remember the John Smith email address, that's okay, you can still search it without with our email address, and then we will show you the search results uh, of the person. Actually, that was this one is way easier to see when we are when we do a demo. So, Christina, can you remind me to do show show this one in demo? Uh, but no essentially, be, before we're asking you, oh, you want to associate someone? Give me your first name, last name, and email. And now we're asking, we're telling you, well, give me the first name and last name, and then I'll figure out what the email is. So, just making it easier for for people to associate members. Okay, village talk and text messages. So this is um, improvements in other areas. Okay, so this is um, village talk is um, discussion board as some people call it. Sometimes it's the online conversation. We're excited about this feature. We have people in Philadelphia that use it intensively and we have more people using it in different villages. We had people doing some tests in San Luis Obispo, in Cleveland and stuff like that. So we think this, this module will grow. One of the things that we were doing is that someone can go in and post um, a message and basically the email sends an email notification the next day to people that are members of that interest group, right? So they receive an email that looks like this, uh, you know, where there's the title of the post and the content of the post and people, you can click on your email and go to see that on the, on the website. Uh, one of the requests we received from our, our friends in Philadelphia is that the poster was not receiving that email themselves. So sometimes they were wondering, it's like, oh, well, that was that notification sent out or not to other people in my group? 
So we added the self notification to the author. So well, I, at first I thought, well, the author is very well aware that he posted, so he doesn't need a notification, but in a way it's good to send the email also because they see how their, their post looks to other people. So now it's kind of, let's call it self notification. Okay, this one is very quick. We, you know, we're working with Gary and Houston for the text messaging system. And then we added this uh, emoji uh, thing because uh, at first it was breaking our system that someone would send an emoji like blah. Uh, but now we can. So you can send emojis if you want when you're sending text messages in both ways. Um, so we exchanged a few emojis with Gary this month. <laughs> um, okay, now changes in payments and donations. I, I It's kind of funny because we, talking about all modules because we did different things, but those things were important. Okay, this is a membership settings, right? So if you go to admin settings, and then in the, there's a membership tab, you can see your membership types. And this is the list of different memberships that your village has, uh, so that is good. And what we change here is just a display thing because you can choose for each one of your membership types, you can choose the, the year amount, the lump sum amount and the monthly fee amount. But basically this list was showing both amounts that you had, even if that option was not activated. Because you can activate the, the lump sum payment option or deactivate it if you, you know, it's a membership type that only allows monthly. So before we were showing both, right, if they existed, but now we're only showing them in the list if that payment option is activated. So, because I don't know, we were, we were doing, working on a ticket. I looked at this like, well, but does this membership type accept your, your payments? And it didn't actually, because the village didn't want to, but it was showing on the list. So it was confusing me. So he said, well, if, if we're not accepting the payment option, we should not show it on the list. So we're just, just hiding. Okay, we have a new email template for the auto task. So remember that there are some email templates that you can create. And then when something happens in the database, we send them automatically. So for example, if you have a renewal uh, of a membership or a thank you for your donation, template that you have set up as an auto task, we will send an email automatically to that person, dear F name, we will replace the variables in there. Now we were doing something is that when someone was paying for membership the very first time, um, we were sending actually the renewal notice email, which was kind of okay, right? Because it kind of sends the information that the payment was made, the new expiration date and stuff. But the language was a little odd because we're saying, well, thank you for renewing with well, this person never renewed, right? It's the first payment. So we just did a separate payment, which is kind of more of a welcome message that is not a renewal, just the first payment. But it works exact same as the, as the other one. It's just sent at a different time when it's the very first payment for the village. <laughs> this one, I had a tough time with this one, really. But um, please help me. <laughs> so we, we were talking with the village and they, they entered a payment of zero dollars, because I don't know, I don't know, I don't fully understand the logic of this one, but I'm okay with it. It's like when they're renewing membership for some of their subsidized members or something, they go in and enter a, a payment of zero dollars. Um, and that was important to them. So, so we did it. <laughs> um, but yeah, my rational mind has a, a tough time uh, figuring this one out. So just, just did it. Okay, this is another change that is rather simple, but I think it's, um, it's good. Um, when you're making a donation, right, there is a drop down box where people can choose what uh, fund they're giving to, right, scholarship, and you can configure these fundraising campaigns on your own. But before we had an option that was kind of please choose, right, if you choose kind of the empty donation form, you have a please choose empty option, you needed to choose one, well, we just remove the please choose option because it was creating trouble when people were trying to make a donation. So, oh, it didn't work because, uh, well, the thing is like you didn't choose a fund. So we cannot accept the donation if you don't know for which fund it is. So we just removed the option that was empty. And now you need to pick one. Uh, you know, if, if he, by default, we're going to show the, your default fund, which is probably the general fund. Uh, and then people can edit it. But it's no longer possible to submit the donation form without this empty, please choose fundraising campaign. Not simple. There is a second improvement that we did, Chris. I don't know if you did a, another slide for that one, uh, but I'll say it here because we did it at the same time. It's like we saw an issue where someone was making a donation anon anonymously. They were providing their first name and last name and email. So that's all good. And we're going to match, you know, if the same email of someone that we know in the database, we're going to use that email to match that person. But what we had is just someone made um, 
a very human mistake, which is they enter first name, last name, and they enter an invalid email address because there, there was a blank space in the middle, etc. It was not a valid email address. So the system was a little confused and say, well, I want to save this user email address because this email address is not valid. So we took the donation, but it was not perfect. Now we're doing, if the person provides an email address that is not valid because they have a typo or they did something, you know, just a human mistake entering their email address, we're going to take the donation, record it properly, and then we're going to uh, give a temporary email until we fix the fact that this person didn't provide. I mean, it's just, just, just being, we're being more human. We're accepting more the fact that humans make errors sometimes. I don't know why. <laughs> um, we have, while we're talking about donations, there is another new option here. And I'm not an expert about these topics, but I know it was very important for one of our villages in Washington, DC, is that when people make a donation, now you have the possibility to classify this donation if it's coming from a donor advised fund or an individual retirement account, an IRA, right? So you can go in the database, people make their donation and, they, and then they, they don't see these options because they cannot choose if this was a, um, you know, a donor advised fund or a, an IRA, but the, the village can. And then they can check these boxes when they edit the donation and they can produce the report in the donation list so that they will see which one of these donations were an IRA or something. The reason for this, and I, again, I'm not an expert, but when the, your donors use any of these vehicles or something, they already have tax advantages once because they have this donor advice fund and they cannot get tax benefits twice, right? So you cannot include them in your acknowledgement letter or something. So it, it just, you know, it helps for your donors that are using these, these different things. So you have now the possibility to, to check those boxes and it will be included in the report so that when you're calculating the amount of donations that are tax deductible, um, when the tax deductible you can they did will not be included you will know which which donations to include in your in your tax donations i'm sorry i know there is a little bit of noise but they're just walking by um okay <laughs> enough talking about accounting and donations and tax deductions because that's not my favorite topic so let's talk about events um okay we have some improvements here that we did so when you register for an event, we give you the possibility to ask the, part the event participant if they're interested in transportation options. Do you want to have a, uh, you know, do you need a ride or can you take someone with you and stuff like that? So that question remains, but now you have the possibility per event to activate or deactivate that question. So if you, if we have this village that was organizing a, <laughs> an event with 200 people open to the community where they knew they cannot provide transportation for 200 people. They say, well, for this particular event, we would be happy if we're not showing the question, you know, about transportation, because it creates expectation for people that thought that maybe they would get it right. So now you can go into editing events. And then when you edit the events, if you don't want to ask the question for transportation for this event, you can uncheck, uncheck this box and then send it. And then, and then basically when people are registering, they don't see this box. Ooh, okay. So that's kind of, uh, uh, I only have the French word, which is kind of a potpourri of, um, of, of different improvements in all these different modules. So the next thing that I'm gonna show is that we have a brand new module that we're adding to the software. So, um, so say welcome to the blogs module. So um, pretty sure you're all familiar with what a blog is. Essentially, you can have different blog authors, people of your village that go in and write about different blog topics, right? And you can decide what those blog topics are. And then people can go regularly and write those, those blog posts in that topic. That helps, obviously, um, with the visibility of your village. If you're writing and then you get some people that are interested in reading about activities or different topics you're discussing in your village, you can now add, uh, if you want to, you don't have to, right? There's an option is that you can add a blog page to your, to your website. And you can give blog author rights to your authors. Uh, so it looks like this. I'll, I'll do a demo. So don't worry too much, but I, I'll just go through the, through, the, through the functionality first on the slides. Let me see what time it is to make sure I have time for the demo. Yeah. Um, so first you create these different blog topics. Um, what are different topics you're talking about? In this example, we're talking about main time and racism. And then uh, this one looks exactly the same. So I'm going to skip it. Um, each one of these blog posts that you do, you can write a piece and stuff like that, but you can also use these tags. Uh, tags is another way for, you, for your readers to find you know, articles about those same, those same topics. We added some additional, ah, how did I do that? 
And then you added some other fields here, like keywords for search engines and uh, the description of the page. So these two fields that you will see here, you will see them in the in, in the blog post. You see them also in the editable pages. So these two here that there's search engine is that Google uses some of these fields to give you better results. Actually, the keywords they don't use as much as they used to do in the past because um, some people were cheating with the keywords. But it doesn't hurt if you put what you know search words you would like to be found on and then even if google is not using these keywords you know bing and yahoo and other people are using these, these fields so these are typically words you would like to be found about um, on the internet okay so that's for the blog post as i was saying if you want to authorize people to write on your blogs you need to get, go to the right management on the general tab of the person and you need to check this new box that is going to be blog author actually we have two new roles that we're introducing this month Blog author is one, and the other one is one that we have discussed a long time ago that we need to fine tune a little better, but it's volunteer manager. So you can have now volunteer managers that can do uh, more things. Actually, 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 I'm working with Jim on that one, right, uh, from, from Taos, and he also was very vocal about the importance of this role. And we created the role already, but now we're giving it rights about what should a, um, a volunteer manager be able to do on the website so if you have your own suggestions about things you know about that role specifically in your village of a volunteer manager and you think well they should be able to see this and also see that uh, please send your recommendations back to us because we are you created the role and now we need to give some rights associated to that to that role now remember that there is a pre-existing role which is service requests manager people that can see service requests we have another role that is service evaluations manager which is seeing what members and volunteers thought and those are two separate roles quite interesting some villages didn't want the people that are managing you know the service request and, and pairing the volunteers with what did they say after the fact sometimes what they said in the evaluation <laughs> you know maybe it can be a little bit sensitive so it doesn't need to that's why it's so important these roles right because you can say okay you can give service requests and service evaluations right to the same person but in some cases you don't want to do that Oof, sorry for the log centers and that's it uh, this is the next priorities and now i'm going to go into demo so the next thing we're going to be working on is the check-ins management in, and this is associated with the text messenger and the and the emergency uh management so i'm excited about this one this one we're working on with with gary you know that they're in tornado season i want to make sure that if there is a natural disaster the village can reach out to the members and make sure that everyone is all right and then there are some donor management features we're working on. So that's kind of, those are the next thing we're working on. And then now I'm gonna move on to the demo. But before I do demo, we, I can take a breath for two seconds. And if you have any questions, it's a good, a good time to ask your questions. And there are no questions. Manuel? Yes, question. Hi, Carol. Hi, how are you? You're good. Um, just a quick question regarding that volunteer um, services manager rights. Mm, yes. Uh, yes. Is there a tie-in also to being able to define an email so that you know emails can go to that person? Because I think right now, yes, it's lumped in. Yes. Um, I so it's a, it's, a, it's a great question, and I'll explain about that. So first, I want to show these roles. This one is still shocking to me. You see that we have this red color. It's kind of prettier. It used to be kind of a, a bright a bright blue, but it's kind of we have dominant color here. That is good. Now, what I was saying about the roles, and Carol, I know you're aware of what I'm talking about, but for other people that are new to the system, right? When you find the person, I went maybe too quick. Let me go up again. So I just search myself or any other person in the database, right? And then you come to my profile and then you have some information about myself that I skipped. Because what I wanted to see is that on this very same page, if I have admin roles, I can see this actually. I can give rights to other people in the village. And I have as many other roles I can give. And then here includes the blog author that we discussed. Uh, I'm an admin, so I can do everything on the website, but you can give rights about events manager, members manager. There's these two that I'm, I was talking about earlier, service evaluations manager and service yeah. request manager that already exist and are, are, are working. And we're adding this one. This one is new, volunteer manager. Now, what I was inviting the villages to do is telling me, okay, some of these things are kind of, you know, philosophically close to each other, right? Service request manager is very close to a volunteer manager. So we need to make sure 
you know, that th those two things are not the same. And I understand we had a discussion, we're working with Jim also to understand, okay, what's the difference between a service request manager and a volunteer manager, but fine. Uh, so that was one question. And then Carol, your other question is here, right? Is what happens if I go to settings, when there's some event that happens on the website, the, on the system, the system sends an automatic email. For example, if you receive a donation, the, 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 the system will, yeah. will send an automatic email to your treasurer because we thought, hey, you receive a donation, the treasurer should hear about this. So about that, you go to the contact info area and then in the contact info, other than the address and contact info of your village, you can have here the notification recipient. So this is where we send different emails for different people here. You can have the admin email, the membership email, applications email, treasurer email. And when some event happens, the system automatically sends an email to the person that is listed here. So it's quite interesting, Carol, what you're saying, because you can have, you kind of, you know, they're separate is what I'm saying. You can give rights to more than one person. And, um, or for example, I can be treasurer, this other person is treasurer and this, the treasurer emails that we're sending. Um, so is uh, in this case here, so, so mm -hmm. we have the separate email for memberships, applications mm -hmm. email, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. both membership and volunteer applications going to that? It's a good question. Actually, we that's had what we this, wanted to break yeah, we out. had we had this one uh, that we, we want to change that. Uh, so the, the initial thing is that we had the all the application forms were going to this applications email address. After discussion with many villages, I don't think that's the best option. So because I think what we want to do is we probably get rid of this one, and then get the fact that when you get receive a member application email, it goes to the membership email notifications. Mm -hmm. And the volunteer application emails go to the, uh, yeah, to the volunteer yeah. manager email or something. So we're gonna be splitting this right. one. We'll probably go away. There is another improvement that we're doing this month that, that is, was not on the slides, but I started working on it, and it will be ready for this weekend. Because the other thing is, everything we discussed today is not on your servers today, because we always do that. We discuss about them first, and we deploy on the weekend. And on the weekend, we are doing another, another change that was quite popular requested in particular for DC villages is that now you, we are making it possible to have more than one email address here, right? So if, for example, you, if you have the treasurer notifications, mm. we're sending it to Christina here, but if we say you wanna send them to Christina and Manuel, this will start working from Monday. So from, yeah, from this weekend. So the possibility oh. that you can have one, more than one email address to notify when one of these events happen. So it's kind of funny because it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's something where we thought, well, you know, people, you can forward your emails and stuff like that. But we have heard several times that, you know, it creates some confusion. So we, yeah. we exactly. well, please don't exactly. add 25 people here. Exactly. Maybe we limit it to two or three because we don't want to have, you know, a ton of emails going out to a ton of people. But you can have more than one uh, on, this, on this month version. Great. Emmanuel, do they have to be help the village? Uh, oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 no. All these email addresses, I mean, this is because it's demo. So basically, we tried with that. But basically, if you have uh, a user and uh, to the network.org, uh, that would go, uh, you know, Gary, to, to you and stuff like that. It can be any email. So, um, so this is uh, the notification of when some of the automatic things happen on the, on the, for example, here you have event email. When there is an event registration, there is an email that is being sent to this email. Now you can have more than one. Great, I really like that, especially that I could customize it myself mm -hmm. without contacting you. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's great. So, so you, you will be able to, yeah, you will be able to add it yourself. So don't do it before this weekend though, because uh, for now it's only working with one, but when, you know, next week, when there will be the new version on the server, you will be able to do comma here and then add uh, another second address, okay? So my, well, just just yes. to yes. sorry, just to reiterate, uh -huh. I think it's really important to to split out membership applications, yeah. email from volunteer applications, because mm -hmm. I think most often it's a different person that might be mm -hmm. managing it. Maybe yes. for some it isn't, and then you can pick which, whichever one. But mm -hmm. um, things can get lost in email no, you're easily, right. so yeah. breaking it up is helpful. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll, we'll do that in that one. It's kind of funny. This one is called services email. 
but this one is probably a volunteer email. I don't like the fact that it's called services it's gonna be a little bit ambiguous, but we'll do yeah, a membership email. We're gonna rename this one because it's services. And then, yeah, we'll send the application form for members here, volunteer for here. Chris, can you make a note of this? We're gonna be sending an email. There is another thing that we're changing in our operations um, based on some discussions we have had with our customers is that you know that we record this session and then we publish it and you can rev you review it later. Uh, one request we received is that, you know, we, that we send a, a MailChimp message after the webinar when the recording is available that includes the list of all the improvements. So the list of all the improvements we did this month is always listed on the, on the YouTube video description, right? But uh, some people asked us that it was better for them to have them in an email so that they can forward to their staff and stuff like that. So we will be sending an additional email per month. So I hope you know, everyone is okay with that. That includes the list of improvements of the month and the recording of the video so that it's easier for you to forward it to, um, you know, to whoever needs to hear about those changes. Okay, uh, Chris, can you make a note of those two things? The fact that you know, the member application form emails yes. and the volunteer application form go to two separate people and the fact that these comma things here, we have them, you know, we put them in the list of improvements of this, of this month, okay? Yes. Ooh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, let me let me show you uh, some of the features we discussed before. I'm going to start with the blog feature. So if you go here under the member area, actually you can put in different areas, but there's this new blog feature. If you click on it, you have all these different blog topics that you can choose and define. So you can come here. If you don't like these blog topics, you can create another new blog topic. Actually, it will be empty for you. You will have no blog topics at the beginning, so you can choose your own. Uh, and then once you have created them, you can choose any of these uh, blog topics. Let's take this one. And then for this blog topic, you have a list of articles that have been included in that blog topic. So if you need to edit the blog topic or delete the blog topic, you have these, these normal things here. You can also create a new blog post. Uh, if I have obviously the, the blog author rights, I can do that. If I don't have the rights to write blog posts, well, then I will not be able to do that. And then if I edit this blog post, this is how the kind of new blog post or edit blog post would look like. So you can choose a, a, um, basically a title for your, for your blog post, basically a date when, when, when this public publication is done. Actually, you choose this date, right? So you can choose in the calendar saying, okay, it is 11th, but for our own reasons, it makes sense for us, even if I wrote it on the 9th to say that it was written on the 8th. So you can choose the, the display date for this publication. What topic is it on, right? So we saw the topics that we had chosen. So you choose one. Uh, you have the, the, you're familiar with this, um, um, with the web editor. So it's the same thing. You can write your piece here. You can add your links. You can add images. You can add the exact same thing you do for, for, um, for your web pages. At the end of that, you can add, also add some blog tags here. So for example, here we're talking about a new car recommendations. Uh, and you can add more tags here to your conversation. And then these are search engine words. So this is a keyword for search engines and the description uh, in love cars. I actually have an old car, so I'm not one of super love expert, but so remove myself from the old men. <laughs> uh, but then I can save it very easy as we usually do. Uh, and then this is what the the, the blog post article looks like, right? So I, we wrote the piece, this is the title, it was written by me on this day, publication date, there's a little picture of the author, there is these different tags, so you can look up conversations that were using the same tag, this is the, the, you know, basically the tag that I wrote. And then here on the left-hand side, I can see a blog archive where you can see, navigate and go to other blog articles that have been written, right? So I can, and then all, obviously this is organized by months, so this is July, 2022, there's other, blog articles in June, 2022. So we would kind of navigate in by dates. And then if you go here and we wanna see a different article, I think maybe this one, uh, you can also navigate from there. And this article actually, Christina wrote it and she wrote all these pieces, et cetera. And then all of this is visible um, under the blog topics that we saw before, right? If you wanna see articles in this in this category you click there you see the new car models article that i wrote with these tags and then if you click on it you see my you see my article so basically it's just a way for for people to publish new content and articles on on your village website so um you can work so it's going to become available on 
This weekend is a free module, so there is no extra fees for that one. Um, we recommend uh, that you start slow, basically. <laughs> so what I mean is that you, you give it a try uh, before publishing. So there is no pressure. You see what I'm saying? To try it, we can hide it from your members at the beginning until you're ready. You see what I'm saying? That you feel comfortable and you see if this works or not. So we're very happy if you you start doing your test, please feel free, feel free to contact Christina about how, you know, how to get some blog topics, how to get going and stuff like that. We will be hiding the kind of the menu, kind of the item from the menu so that your members don't see that yet. But you can start working on it uh, as uh, village coordinators. And then if you like it, we will open it up to, to your members whenever, whenever, whenever that's ready. Okay, so that's for blogs. Uh, there's other features you can click on, you know, tags and stuff like that, but you, you have time to explore this. I wanted to show you some of the other. Manuel, sorry, yes. just mm -hmm. a few questions. Yes. Uh, how did you get there, right? Um, Here? Yeah. I yeah, to create the blog. And uh, what's the difference with Village Talk? Perfect. Great question. So the blog is something that is public, right? So if I, if I log out, Basically, people that are visiting the website anonymously, they can read the blog post. That's it's a, it's a, it's kind of it's some sort of a newsletter publication that is visible to everybody. Village Talk is private, right? So Village Talk is only visible for, uh, for your members, right? So um, that, see if you go back here to Village Talk. Uh, there are these different discussion groups and all of this discussion that happens here. Can you provide a short update? What do parents like most and stuff like that? All of this discussion here is a, is a private in a living room of uh, of your members, right? So whatever is written there is, is, is yeah, kind of basically is kept for, for, for village. And then here we you can subscribe to these different topics. We're going to send you an email and stuff like that. And these other blog topics is uh, you need to think about it like, uh, you know, like you sign out. And when you sign out, there is a blog option here that people can go and read, but they don't need to log into the system and they don't need to be members or anything it will be visible to everybody. It's just, I don't know how to say it. It's kind of a public statement or article your, your village is, is, is publishing. Thank you for the question. I like that question a lot. Um, okay, I wanted to show you other things, but Chris, I don't know if you had other questions first. Do you recommend that admins review um, the blog's publications? So just highlight that if you provide the blog author role to someone just make sure that's correct oh yeah well i like that question too because uh, something we're not doing but we should do is that we're going to send an email every time there is a new blog post publication so that at least or optional at least so that the admin will know oh there is a new blog post so you can eventually go and see what what happened so we will add a notification uh, in there okay okay i wanted to show you one feature that i had a hard time explaining before it's actually not that hard, but it's uh, sometimes it's easier to show than to than to explain with just words. But basically, here when you go to the member tab and you have associated members because I'm in a household membership, um, if you want to associate someone here, you go to the associated members, and then here we have these three fields. So these are the same that we were doing before. And then basically here, let's say that I want to associate with another member, that is Christina Severo, and then before we were making this field mandatory. And now it's no longer mandatory. So I don't need to remember what was Christina's email, et cetera. So I can just submit it like this. And when I say add, actually it doesn't add it. Um, oh, damn. I don't know what happened here. Maybe you're not a member, Chris. Let me see. Blah. Yeah, I don't know. Now it's not going to go. That's funny. OK. Well, basically what, what I was saying. We'll maybe it's because that. you have an individual membership. So maybe I have an individual membership, but if I have an you individual membership. You can try with uh, Lisa mm -hmm. or myself. When you, okay. you well, want. if I have an individual member, I should not show associated member tab, but, but you're right. Here, and then we want to associate that with, let's say me. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe I broke something. We'll fix that before before the weekend. But essentially what I was saying is that it will show me different people that exist in the database. And if, if that person existed, I can associate it from there. And if it doesn't exist, I can also create it from here, this other person. Chris, was there any other uh, feature or demo that I said I would, I would demonstrate on, on demo or not? Well, I can go to donations actually, maybe. Boom. 
Yeah, you can oh. go to donations and show how admins can add the IRA funds and advice yeah, funds. Exactly, let's do that. Uh, okay, Ooh. Yeah, I'm slow. I'm too hungry today. My brain is not working. Uh, okay, so here you have the list of donations you can see for your village. And then these, these different uh, donations that have been made to different things. You can click one of the donations. And then you can see what this one is about. And then if you edit this donation, you, this is the same. You can see the amount, the different options there was there. And then we added a couple of new um, check boxes here. So if this one is a donor advice fund donation or an individual retirement account, you can click it here and then save it. The cannot do it because that one was a bank account donation. So we are, we're going to fix that something. Ah, okay. Do. Well, anyways, yeah, I didn't choose a, a good one because uh, I, I actually didn't think because we didn't want to make these bank account donations editable too much because you cannot change the amount and stuff like that, but you should be able to check the check boxes. So I'll, I look at that before the weekend too. Okay, so those are the improvements I had in mind. So I don't know if we have any other questions. Uh, yeah, there are some mm -hmm. questions in the chat. Okay. So one of the questions is that um, if you can show how to do an anonymous, anonymous donation. Mm. Yeah, good question, actually. Let me see. I'm, I'm thinking, actually, because not sure we do anonymous donations so much. So if I wanted to do a donation for myself, right, and I'm logged in, I can do this, select myself, can choose the amount. Then I know we have a checkbox here that says uh, naming contribution records or contribution in... Uh, yeah, basically what we have seen happening here is usually saying people saying, well, please, you know, in the comment section, just say, please make this uh, an anonymous donation, et cetera. Uh, or, or here naming contribution records, say, please uh, keep it anonymous or not anonymous donation. But when we're taking the payment, we are essentially asking for the first name and last name, which I'm happy to hear back from people because I don't know for me, because it was about money, we needed to know where the money was coming from. So we still need to keep the name even though for the you know, contribution records and stuff like that, we can keep it anonymous, but I think we need to, to take the name at first. Um, I asked that question and it's because we have a yoga class uh -huh. where people just put cash in an envelope. Okay. So how do I put that into the system? Yeah, well, you know what, uh, it, that's an interesting question. One, one way of doing it, but I'm not even sure, right? But it's, you, you could come here, people management i mean i, I I'm, I'm not even sure what i'm what i'm what i'm what i'm saying because i don't i'm not sure i like it too much but the thing is like you can create a person you know basically here that could be anonymous something okay technically that's possible now <laughs> legally or whatever i don't know you know you ask your accountant what's the best way to do but you definitely can create a a, a person that is anonymous first name anonymous last name and associate the donation with with that that's technically that works on the accounting and legal side, I don't know what you know your Ooh, accountant would, would recommend, but but technically that works. Oh, and that's okay. Thank you, because mm -hmm. I wondered if I was missing something. So. No, there is yeah, a recommendation on the chat uh, mm -hmm. just yeah. to create a cash donation person. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that thank works. you. It's a great question. I didn't have the answer, so sometimes I I learn things during the webinars too. <laughs> okay, do we have other questions, Chris? Um, yeah, uh, for the village talk, uh, if there yeah. are groups open for volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have some open to volunteers because I, I don't remember the exact answer right now, but. Uh, it's oh. named active volunteers. In oh, you have an active volunteers. Yeah, we have an active volunteers group where basically only volunteers can, can join and the members cannot. And basically we can have discussions about among active volunteers. I know we have another one about call. Call, what was the name, Chris? Call coordinator. Call manager. Call manager. So there's these people, some of the villages were operating with these call managers. So basically they have different people at different times of the day that get phone calls for the village for, for, for service requests. And they need to exchange information, discussion about, well, you know, um, 
Georgina called at nine, she's looking for something like that. And then basically the exchange on that conversation on that village talk um, kind of channel, which is also a village coordinator. I don't know if anyone else has questions. I, I think I there are no more questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. And we don't, and that's totally fine. Uh, we can we can keep it like this um, before we go because we can close the webinar you know five minutes early. Before I go, just a quick reminder about this. Um, you know, there is this volunteer manager role that we're adding. I know Jim is working on it. Carol, I know you had some ideas potentially about what should the volunteer manager do. But any other village, if they have ideas of, well, we have a volunteer manager and we know in their case, there's this number of things they need to do. They need to look at the map where the volunteers are living, where the members are living. They should be able to look at the, um, the, at the they should be able to search a person and stuff like that. So all the, all the rights you think a volunteer manager should have, it's a good time to let us know because we'll be adding and giving more rights to that, to that person. Perfect. And um, other than that, you are free next week. So have a wonderful Wednesday. <laughs> and, then, and then we meet again two weeks from now. So um, that, that two weeks from now will be a Q&A. So your questions uh, and answers, and we'll be happy to do that. And in case there are not too many questions, we'll do a website editing training at that time. OK, everybody, was great to have you for this webinar. Thank you very much. Uh, have a good vacation. Time. Thanks, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. You, you bye, -bye. enjoy it. Bye-bye. Good luck, Manuel. Good time. Thank you. I'll do the next webinar sitting next to Christina. That, that's always yeah. a pleasure. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.